Harvey Rice family. This is Shauna Stevens, and some of you may know me as the Harvey Rice yoga instructor. But today, I'm actually going to put on my other hat, my realtor hat. Yes, I am a real estate agent in Ohio with Brick House Realty. And today, along with my broker, Andrea Wilson, we're going to share with you some tips about home ownership and go a little bit deeper in how you might be able to um, consider going down the path of home ownership. And we would love to have that opportunity. Again, Shauna Gunter, I have 17 years of experience in real estate. I specialize in residential sales, and that includes first-time buyers, um, step-up buyers, downsizers. That also includes some probate homes as well as luxury properties. I serve the greater Cleveland community as well as the surrounding neighborhoods, um, and I look forward to hopefully helping you guys. Andrea? Hi, everyone. As she mentioned, I'm Andrea Wilson. I'm actually the broker and um, owner here at Brick House Realty. Um, we're a full service real estate brokerage right here in, in Northeast Ohio. Actually, office is located in Maple Heights, and we service Cleveland and that greater Cleveland area as well. And so I am so excited to be here with you guys today, today sharing some information about home ownership. We take pride in that. So we love sharing this information and love connecting with you guys. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about the importance of home ownership and what it takes to actually become a homeowner. We're going to talk a little bit about credit um, and those in down payment assistance programs and just building wealth. So let's just jump right into it. So the importance of home ownership, what would you first think about? A lot of people oftentimes think about the social and tax benefits of home ownership. And so those can be, you see an increased number of community involvement when you have a home on, when you're a homeowner. Um, you also have some tax benefits, it's tax season. So feel free to ask your tax consultant some questions because um, they are the expert in that area. But then you also can see some financial education benefits when there's a homeowner, when you're a homeowner. Um, studies have really shown that children do better when they have, in, they're actually in a home because the parents, there's a higher level of self, um, self awareness and self control. Um, so that actually filters down to the children. Now let's think on the financial side. The benefit there is the child sees the parent, you know, maintaining the home budgeting, and then that trickles down to them as well for their future financial decisions. So in addition to that, there's a ton of other benefits. Andrew, would you talk to him about the wealth benefits? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times people don't think about um, leaving that legacy for their children um, and those future benefits of owning a home. We always hear people talking about creating generational wealth and owning real estate is, is one of the primary ways that you are able to do that. So what happens is when you own a home, you're making those monthly payments, it's kind of a way of having like a forced saving. So every time that you make a payment, so not 100% of the payment, but a portion of that payment is being made and it's helping build equity within the home. So that equity is just kind of building up for maybe a future use that you don't even know exists at this moment. If you're here, we're talking to Harvey Rice School. So you you have children and children will want to possibly go to college down the line, right? And we always hear about the stories of everyone with so much student loan debt or kids not being able to make it to college because they don't have the funding to do that. Well, ownership can allow you to do that. If you've owned that home, you know, and you've had that home for 30 years, 10 years, um, 20 years, this will allow you to pull that equity out of the house and maybe go towards that college tuition, setting yourself up for retirement, going on that vacation you ever, ever wanted to go on. And one of the biggest benefits that I believe is if you wanted to start that business. A lot of times, you know, you want to open a bakery, you want to open up a restaurant. You can't just walk into the bank. So a lot of times we're looking for funding for our business and we can't find it because walking into the bank saying that you want to, for the first time, start that bakery 
bakery sounds like a risky business for that banker. So more than likely, they're going to deny you or turn down that loan that you need to get started. Well, you can be your own bank by owning a home. You can pull that equity right out of your home to then take that to become that entrepreneur you want it to be. Wow, that's a lot of benefits. I hope you guys really paid attention, took some notes on that. And don't worry, we'll recap some things at the end. And at the end, we'll share our contact information um, so that you can connect with us and ask any questions that you may have. So let's talk about what it takes to own a home. Andrew, you want to start off? Yeah, so the first thing that you're going to do, um, I always like to tell people kind of assess your situation of where you're at, right? So we want to know if you don't already know where your credit score is. And part of the one way that you're able to do that is by talking to a lender. The lender will get you a what's called a pre-approval. He's going to ask for some financial information from you. We'll want to see your current pay stubs, possibly your tax returns. So he's going to gather this information from you and work to get this pre-approval. And looking at your credit score is just one piece of that. So that pre-approval helps your, what, what we're going to talk about next, your real estate agent who you'll be working with to know how much you're approved for. So how much home are you, or what price point of a home that you're going to be looking for in the marketplace. And also it helps tell what type of loan. There's a couple of different types of loan, whether it's FHA, conventional, there's a couple others out there as well, but those are probably the two primary. So it's going to, start to build your profile and give your real estate agent the necessary information that they need. Yes. So after you receive your pre-approval, what's next? Let's talk about down payment and closing costs. Oftentimes people think that, hey, down payment and closing costs are just you know the same thing and they're not. So obviously the down payment is a percentage of what you have to put down upfront for the deal. And then closing costs is in addition to your uh, down payment, which is part of the end of the deal. So there's lots of down payment programs that are available um, county-wise, state-wise um, that we can look into. Your lender will find what program works best for you in your situation and then apply that. Now, closing costs, who pays closing costs? Well, technically the buyer pays closing costs, but when you work with a great agent, they know how to um, work and construct the deal where we request the seller to um, contribute towards your closing costs. Does it happen all the time? Most of the time, but there are times that the seller can have that choice to actually say yes or no. So we just want to bring that awareness to you. Anything you want to add to that, Andrea? No, you, you hit everything right on point. Um, that down payment and closing costs, um, a lot of times people just get that confused and just thinking it's one pot of money your down payment money has to come from you as the borrower it could come from a down payment assistance program you can get it as a gift but then that um, person that's gifting it to you would have to um, complete a form a gift letter um, but that down payment has to come from you your closing costs we can work this through the deal potentially the seller will cover that for you and depending on what type of loan you're going with it kind of dictates how much the seller can contribute to your closing costs all right awesome so let's talk about working with a realtor so now that you've received your pre-approval um, and now you understand the down payment and the closing costs how do you select a realtor? There's so many realtors to choose from, right? So you want to find an expert in your area. So lo a local agent is what you're looking for. You want someone that's knowledgeable. You want someone who knows how to negotiate. You want someone that's going to be fair um, and available to you to meet your needs. You want someone that's going to listen to what you're looking for, right? Andrea, let's talk about how to determine what agent is best for you. Yeah, you really, a lot of times people will reach out to a family member or friend to ask who do, do they know and maybe they had a good experience with them. You definitely want someone that is knowledgeable and maybe from working within the neighborhood that you're looking to buy. Um, so do your research, sit down, you can interview. You definitely want to have a real estate agent. So let me just point out that piece of it. As a buyer, working with an agent costs you $0. 
Um, so why wouldn't you have an agent? It's kind of like, if you think about if you had to go to court, you would want to bring that attorney with you. Well, a real estate agent would be the same thing. That agent is experienced with looking at the contracts that come across and just handling the process from beginning to end. Um, and so you don't want to go in there without a real estate agent. Even if you go to an open house, if you're thinking about new construction, you still want to hire a real estate agent. And again, as the buyer, it's at no charge to you because the seller covers that portion for you. And, you know, I just thought of something. So oftentimes people are driving around and they see a real estate sign posted outside the home. And they quickly pick up the phone and they dial that number and say, hey, Mr. Agent, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Agent, I see this house on, you know, ABC Street and I absolutely love it, would love to get in and see it. So I just want to bring awareness around that because when you call that number, that's the agent who represents the actual listing. Mm -hmm. So they have that listers interest at best heart, not yours, but, you know, they want to, they want to get the best deal for their clients. So you might walk into that um, situation unrepresented. Um, although it is, it does have to be disclosed during the transaction. But when you walk in there without your own agent, you know, you're, you're actually playing against, you know, the negotiation process. So, you know, just make sure when you find an agent, you know, as you interview agents, you find one that fits, you know, your personality um, and what you're looking for. Just know that, you know, we're here to help you. The real estate agent is here to save you time. You know, we have different connections, you know, with other, um, you know, professionals in the real estate business to help you through the real estate process. Um, we give you a sense of security um, because we know we know what's going on in the market. It's forever changing. And, you know, we stay on top of it you know, through our training. Um, and so we're here to help you and guide you through that process um, and help you make um, help everyone in a fair and ethical decision making process. And not just that. Buying a home is a very emotional time. <laughs> You're going to experience a lot of different emotions. And we're here to help you navigate through that. You know, we're going to be the voice to remind you of what your goals are. Um, we're going to be a voice of reason for you at times when you're just seeing red, when things may not be going as we saw, you know, we would like to go as, as planned. So those are just a few benefits of um, working with a realtor, right? So next, let's just talk about hmm, home inspection. And then we're going to tie that into what, um, what an appraisal is. And then we're going to go into homeowner's insurance. So a home inspection, a home inspector, once we, you know, once everything is going, you have a deal accepted and now it's time for your home inspection. What do we do? So we connect you with the home inspector and give you some options of home inspectors if you don't have someone that you already know. And what, just think of them as they're, you know, they're the eyes to see those things that, you know, you might miss as you're walking through the property. So a home inspector, you, it can range in price anywhere from three to $500. And that does depend on the square footage of the home. So the inspector is going to come in. He's going to check the mechanical systems to make sure everything is working and flowing properly. Um, if there's any cracks, you know, he'll do a little in here. She would do some investigating as to, you know, the cause of those things. He'll take a look at the exterior of the property and go dig and they'll dig a little deeper on the inside. Now, just a little tip. You know, they're not going to like take the home apart to try to find everything. They're visibly, they're using their visual just to find, to see what they can find. Um, some common things they find are, you know, some wiring, the outlets may be wired backwards. Um, they might find that some of the appliances don't, you know, work properly. They look for gas leaks and things like that. Um, they even open and shut the windows to make sure the windows um, operate properly. But there are some things that a home inspection may not reveal that you might have to, that may come up later on um, after home ownership. So anything on home inspection for you, Andrea? Yeah, the, the only thing that I would really say right now, um, we were seeing that the, the, the real estate market right now had been very competitive. And so we were witnessing some misinformation or um, misguidance from some agents out in the marketplace. This is why it's important that you select the right agent. Part of that with this competitive market, um, we were seeing owners or, prop or multiple offers going in on properties. So a strategy that was being told to buyers was to kind of waive 
um, what we call consider it a contingency in the contract, which a home inspection is a contingency because if something comes up on the report, you probably want the owner to fix the property. And if you cannot agree upon it, owner doesn't want to fix it, you're not willing to budge on it, the deal could fall apart. Therefore, that's why it's a contingency. And some of that negotiation um, that agents are telling buyers to do is to waive a home inspection. It's so important, and this is bad information, unless you're maybe a contractor and if something goes wrong, you can fix that property, but it's bad information to waive a home inspection. That home inspector has a trained eye to look from the foundation all the way to the attic, and you really need to know what's going on. And maybe the the life of certain products in the home, the mechanicals, the life of the roof, um, because especially if you're a first time home buyer, you don't want to get in over your head on your first purchase. So if someone is telling you to waive that home inspection, um, you probably should take a second look at who that agent is that you're working with um, and definitely go ahead and have that home inspection done. You know, I want to add to that, especially because um, oftentimes what we see in some of the properties that we tour are, you know, oh, they you walk in and it's like, oh, my goodness, everything is redone. And it actually may not be, you know, yes, it might look, you know, they freshly painted the property. Um, you might have some new flooring. Um, but then, you know, so sometimes the eye tend to like gaze toward the, the new things and we kind of miss some of the other things. So that home inspector can say yes. The carpet looks great, but hey, underneath the floor is a little uneven. So that is why it's so important um, to have a, a, a home inspection and never to skip it, like Andrea said, unless you are you know, qualified to actually make some of those repairs and financially take on the responsibility to make some of those repairs. So let's move on to appraisals. Go ahead, Andrea. So the appraisal is all part of the of the um, home buying process. So once you have that contract approved, we move right into um, that um, home inspection period. Once the home inspection is done, that's when the appraisal is scheduled. Now the appraisal, when your loan officer orders the appraisal is part of your loan application process. This is another expense that you're gonna have to pay for roughly about $500 for the loan application and for the appraisal. So the appraisal is ordered, they usually coordinate through the listing agent and the owner of the property. That appraiser is going to come out. Now, depending on your loan type, and so again, there's two common loan types, your FHA and your conventional loan. Each appraiser is actually um, skilled or licensed to be able to appraise based on the guidelines of the type of loan that you receive. I know that was a lot of uh, to like graphs around there, but for example, if you have a FHA loan, FHA is a government backed loan. So they want to make sure that the property is move in ready and the, and the property has to meet certain guidelines. So when that appraiser goes out, he's going to make sure that the property meets that guidelines. If the property does not meet the guidelines, he's going to go back and say, we need the house scraped and painted, or we need this electrical panel updated in there. So just because the appraiser is doing somewhat what sounds like an inspection just does not eliminate the need to have a home inspection. This is two separate things that, that we're talking about here. So right. appraiser goes through the property. He is checking everything, interior and exterior of the house, and he's going to give a value of the house. So he'll receive a copy of the contract that you have, that you wrote that offer for, and he's going to make sure that to let the bank know that the value of the house matches the loan amount that they're going to be issuing. In the event that it comes back lower, this is another kind of like contingency in the contract or opportunity for us to go back and renegotiate the contract. And sometimes it gets worked out. Other times it doesn't get worked out for various reasons in there. Typically, um, the appraiser is only going to say it meets the value. So say you were getting this property at a steal, 
for this process, for the loan, they're on, they typically will only say it meets whatever the offer price is. If you truly want to know the value of the home, you probably are going to have to get an independent appraisal, which people don't normally do, but an independent appraisal to learn the true value of the home. Absolutely. So that takes us to homeowner's insurance. So homeowner's insurance, think of it like car insurance, <laughs> you know, and that's the best way that I can describe it. Um, it's a payment that you're going to make to have insurance on your property should something go wrong. So think of it is obviously you cannot skip um, homeowner's insurance. It is required um, to close your loan, um, but you can select your current insurance um, company or you can just shop around and see what's going to be the best quote for you. Um, so the homeowner's insurance gives you that, re, you know, that assurance that, you know, if everything's going to be okay, should something go wrong. Anything else you want to add to that? No, that's, that's just another part of the process to give you that added protection on there. Um, your lender is going to require, but prior to closing that you have some homeowner's insurance. So maybe if you have renter's insurance or whoever you have your car insurance through, you can reach out to them and get a quote on your insurance as well. Okay. So there we are. Homeowner's insurance, car insurance. They go with the same way. So we're going to move into credit. And this is where I, we get excited about because, you know, Andrea has some great information she's going to share. Um, what our agency is involved in to help you um, either better your credit or maybe your credit's already okay. And we can just kind of take a look and see what we can do to help you get started. But credit is near and dear to Andrea. So I'm going to sit back and let Andrea take over the credit talk. Yep. So we won't dive in all the way, but I do want to let you guys leave here with some information and things to think about at the end of this. Um, so when we, we talk to so many potential buyers on a daily basis, and I would say that the biggest reason or barrier for home ownership is going to be that credit piece of it. You know, a lot of times people shy away from the credit conversation, just um, don't want to face it, don't even want to look at their credit report because when you look at their credit report, it becomes real. So we've really been working with people to face it. Whatever the situation is, however you got there, this is really a no judgment zone. We want to help you overcome that obstacle. And so that first part of that is going to talk to someone that can help you. So as part of our office, we have what's called a HUD housing agency where our services are free. We help people become and get on track to becoming mortgage ready. So we review your credit report. We're going to go through, tell you the necessary steps and help you. So you may have heard of credit repair companies. We're not a credit repair company. The, di the main difference is a credit repair company, you kind of pull your file together, you talk to someone, you pay them a monthly fee, and they kind of do everything for you. Well, you don't learn that way, right? So the main thing about credit is being patient. It takes time. It took you slowly got into that situation of bad credit and you will slowly have to or have to be patient to get out of that poor credit situation but if you commit to the process i promise that you will be on track and being right into your new home so again our services are free under our hud housing agency we handle uh, credit services um, home buyer workshops like like we're doing here. We have um, if you need rental assistance, we can help you with all of that. The one thing I'm just going to quickly share here, and if you have a phone, please take a screenshot so you're able to see that. You should be able to see on my phone. It is the it is a pie chart showing your FICO score. Um, many of you may have an app on your phone called Credit Karma. It's a great app. I have it on my phone too. The only problem with Credit Karma is that it uses a different scoring model. It's called Advantage Scoring Models. Where your lenders, whether you're buying a car or buying a house, they're going to use a FICO scoring model. So still use that Credit Karma app to kind of track where you're at those notifications that it sends you, but you really wanna understand this pie chart right here. So take a picture, screenshot, whatever you need to do. 35% of what makes up your credit score is gonna be this payment history. 
making sure that you're making those payments on time every month is so important. 30% is the amounts owed. If you have a $1,000 credit card, you should be using no more than 30% utilization. If you, if you have your cards maxed out, that's killing your credit. You wanna get that down to at least 30% or below that 10, or 10 to 20% is really the sweet point on there. 15% is going to be the length of credit history, 10% is new credit, and another 10% types of credit used. Now, I just wanted to share that quickly. We don't have the time today to really go in depth on that chart, but those are some of the things that if you don't really understand that you wanna circle back to and really get to know. The more you can understand that pie chart and how it breaks down, and maybe you're just, it's a timing issue between when you receive your paycheck and when your bills are due. That's a conversation that you may need to have with that creditor to say, hey, can you move my due date on there? Or which bills you should be paying first. So I know I quickly went over that, um, but just wanted to let you know that in our office, Brickhouse Realty, Shana, have, we have everything that you need to get you from A to Z of owning a home. Awesome. So what I do want to say to you parents is like, do not allow lack of understanding or knowing what your credit is to stop you from building the future that you want for yourself and your family. It's a mindset shift that we have to take. And like Andrea mentioned, if you don't know what your numbers are, if you don't know what's on your credit report, you're not going to know how to move forward. So we're here to help you explore um, your next steps on your credit um, worthiness, as well as how, you know, not just home ownership, but just we want to see you guys thrive. We want to see you guys reach for your goals, so if your goal is home ownership, we are here for you and we will walk you through that process. And we're going to tell you, give you something at the end, a little incentive um, to hopefully move you forward um, to moving towards your dreams of home ownership. So we were going to next talk about our down um, payment assistant money. Um, we kind of touched base on that earlier when we were talking about down payments. Um, I mentioned that this, there are some fund, there's some funding available um, to, from the state, the county, and some municipalities, some cities actually do have other incentives um, to help home ownership. Um, so Andrew, do you want to go anything deeper? I know we covered a lot of it earlier. Yeah, the only thing that I will say about the down payment assistance money, because everyone's always want to know, where does the money reside, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> so, over the money. <laughs> so it's looking for, for down payment assistance money. There is money available. There's different programmings, like, like Shauna was saying. It's best for you to kind of reach out. Um, you know, at the end of this, you know, Shauna share her contact information. But um, the reason why I'm saying you want to reach out first before just exploring out, because your local banks, for example, will have down payment assistance money, but they may have a requirement that you live in a low to moderate income area. And all communities typically have a low to moderate income area, whether you're in a suburb or inner city. And so it's fine if you planned on living in that area, but maybe you didn't want to live in that footprint you know, where that's considered low to moderate income. That's a conversation that we need to have uh, for you as part of your onboarding so that we know where to send you to get the money that you need. There's lots of money out there. Some programs run out of money at the beginning of the year. And then there's some programs that have money year long and we can help you find that down payment assistance. Absolutely. And so working with us and working with a lender, we can absolutely get you in the right on the right path to um, obtaining down payment assistance if that's what you require. Um, but just know that some loans might not um, allow the down payment assistance where you'll see the money because the interest rate may change um, with some of the down payment assistance programs. But the lender will be able to determine what um, the best solution is for you. And we'll be along right there with you, along with you um, down the side to determine that. So let's see. We talked about the importance of home ownership. We talked about what it takes to get a home. We talked about credit, down payment, um, creating general generational wealth. That is a topic that we have to address. Like we have to. My Harvey Rice family, I know that you desire to have the best for your family, your children and your children's children, but you might not know how to get there. Real estate is a great option on building generational wealth. 
And I want you to understand we're going to tie that back to credit. I'm going to tie it back to credit because I know that sometimes you think that generational wealth and building that is out of your reach. But we're here to tell you that if you are committed to the process and your dream of building that generational wealth for your family, you know, we're here to walk you through every step of the way. So building generational wealth is, again, something that Andrea in her in Brickhouse Realty is like passionate about. And not just we are passionate for you, but Andrea is our broker. She and Mark, they actually, you know, say, hey, wait a minute, agents, you know, we have to also step up and do what we're teaching. So Andrea is going to talk to you about how to create generational wealth and overview and some options that you can take. Andrea? So I know we talked a little bit about this earlier on in a conversation as we were taking talking about the importance of home ownership. Um, but we've kind of been touching on the fact of buying a new home. Maybe you don't own a home now and buying a home. So uh, another piece that we really need to address and help you understand is that many of us inherit a home, big mama's house, grandma's house, mom's house. And we have formed a habit of as soon as that deed is transferred over to us, we're running to the bank. We're trying to cash in on that house. And we have to shift our mindset around that. We want to start holding on to big mama's house. And then we pass that down from generation to generation, their kids, kids, that money that you receive from that, from the sale of that house, oftentimes just kind of blows or goes, we spend through it so quickly, we have nothing to show for it in the end, $20,000, $30,000, whatever it is, $100,000 oftentimes split amongst the family members, we're not seeing that full benefit. So once upon a time, we can look through communities, especially if we're talking about inner city communities, where we had a lot of legacy owners passing these properties through from generation to generation. Now, as we start to look in these communities, a lot of investors and oftentimes foreign investors people who've never been to the United States are coming in, they're buying these properties. So you have to imagine that if someone across the map never been to Cleveland, Ohio, they purchase a property, they've never seen it. How do they even know um, that the property is being properly taken care of? They don't know. And a lot of times they don't hire a reputable management company to help manage these properties. And it's, and it's um, hurting our communities. It's hurting our communities that to the point where when you drive down the streets, you're seeing abandoned house after abandoned house or even empty fields because now these houses have been torn down and so leave us with nothing in these communities, right? But if we start to hold on to these properties a lot longer and pass it to the, through the families, make the repairs on the house year after year, that's how we create generational wealth. That's how we build our own communities. And we know that home ownership stabilizes communities. History has shown us, the data shows us that home ownership uh, stabilizes the community and it creates a pride of home ownership. Owners typically take care of their yards better versus if there's just renters in those properties. So I know Shauna is going to share some information, actually wants to share a story of kind of how that process works, what that would look like. So Shauna, if you could go ahead, you know, and share your story, and give your own testimonial to this so they know that I'm not just making this all up, that it's real. It's real, everybody, it's real. So when I was in my late twenties, I was on the hunt to purchase my new home, or to purchase a home, my first home. And I remember just waking up and saying, you know, I wanna buy a house. And I did not know what my credit was. I did not have a huge savings account. And to be honest, all I had was $800 in my savings account. But I knew I was going to get a home and I was just that kind of person to say, hey, if I want something, I'm just going to go for it and get it. So I started to look for a home and I did do that thing that I said not to do earlier on. I went to a property and I saw the for sale sign and I contacted the agent and she showed me the property and I said, OK, you know what? I, I want this house. So I walked into this deal unrepresented because I contacted the listing agent. 
And the deal went, it was, it was a different experience um, because I did not know that I was unrepresented. I was not a real estate agent at that time. I was in my 20s. <laughs> I did not know what was going on. If they said sign here, I just cover my eyes and I just signed wherever they said to sign. Um, so what I learned in this um, process was there is um, a lot of flexibility <laughs> in real estate. You have to have a lot of knowledge. You have to have some knowledge. Your agent is there to help you along the way. So as I was going through my transaction, purchasing my first home, which is again a condo, I wasn't aware of what a homeowner association was. I didn't know that there were going to be a month, there were going to be monthly homeowner association fees. So when I signed everything to, you know, for the contract, I was ready to go. I did have a home inspection because she did recommend that. Um, but I didn't know to negotiate the findings of the contract, the home inspe um, inspection into the contract. Um, so we moved on. I accepted all, all the flaws in the property um, and bought it as is. And as we were going on, you know, I gave remember I had $800. That was my down payment. So now it's time to close. And the title comes like, okay, well, you need to bring X amount of dollars to the table for closing. And I was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> how much was that? <laughs> and I said, um, I thought I told you guys that I only had $800. <laughs> and they said, well, yeah, but that was for down payment. And now we need closing cost money. I didn't have any more money. So, and I didn't know at that time how they worked it out. But now that I'm a real estate agent, I know the processes and how it works. So the agent went back to the seller and Mr. His, his first name is Steve. So Steve um, built those closing costs back into the loan and he paid the closing costs for me so that I could have my home, my first home with my daughter. So I still do own this property and we're talking about generational wealth. So actually my daughter now lives in this property. And once I have this property paid off in a couple of years, and the title was free and clear, I'm signing it over to her. So now I'm passing along this home to her. And then when she moves out, that's now gonna be a property that she can now turn into monthly income for her. So I just want to share, you know, in my actual story of my first home purchase and how I didn't realize back then I was gonna use it for generational wealth, but now I am. And I am so excited about what the future holds for my daughter. Um, who is also in the real estate industry now and what she can do with that as well as multiple properties along the way. So do not allow the mindset of I don't have to stop you again. Let us help you get on that right track to achieve your dreams in real estate and how to get started in building generational wealth. Oh, <laughs> that's my story. And remember, I was not a real estate agent when that happened. <laughs> So I think Shana gave an example of kind of like our next topic of why to work with a realtor and as well as that generational wealth. So, you know, Shana was able to hold on to this property prior to her daughter living there and collect rent. Well, actually, the tenant was paying that mortgage for her. Um, so she had a tenant that was living in that unit that's going, that was basically paid most of the mortgage off on this property. And now she's turning that over to her daughter. Her daughter is going to see more benefit from that property than even Shauna did because Shauna's, the rent she was collecting is paying down the mortgage. Well, she's then going to turn, she, Shauna is going to turn over this property to her daughter. If her daughter moves out of, out of there, maybe the daughter decides to move back home with her mom, right? And she collects rent from there. Now her daughter can potentially collect, I don't know, 600, 700, $1,000. I'm not sure how much the rent could be there where this house is, but say it's a thousand dollars a month. So now her daughter could be collecting a thousand dollars a month in rent. She'll have to pay taxes, pay the insurance. So maybe she nets, we'll say $500 a month from this thing. Well, how many of you could use an additional $500 a month to pay towards any bills that you have? So that's what generational wealth creates. And that's what we, why we're here talking about um, ownership because we want to help you create these things. And when you're working with the right real estate agent, 
um, we can help you get through this process, make the right first purchase because you don't want to over purchase. Your first home shouldn't be your dream home. So we want to help you through that process. And for the reasons that Shauna says, she was unaware of what she was getting herself into. Um, it sounds like that agent kind of helped her out a little bit, but it doesn't sound like from that at first experience that they really explain the process. And so that this is why you want to work with a real estate agent. Absolutely. So again, we are here for you. Brick House Realty is here to help you along the way and to explore what your options are and what your next steps are. Um, so let's talk next steps. What can we do to help you? What are you willing to do? Are you ready to put a little skin in the game and actually pick up the phone and give us a call and be brave and say, hey, I'm, I don't know where I am, but I'm ready. You know, I, I, I want to figure out what, what to do. How do I own my first home? Or maybe it might be your second home. You know, let's, let's help you. Let us help you walk you through this process. Let's find out where you are. Uh, we would love to talk with you guys um, to find out, um, you know, what's the best fit for you for real estate, how to build generational wealth. Somebody might say, hey, you know what? I really love, you know, renting, but I do want to build generational wealth. How can I do that? You know, we can help you with that as well. You have to, like we said earlier, you have to decide what your situation is and what's going to be, what's going to work best for you and your family. Um, so if that is, you want to remain renting, we also do leases so we can help you find another property as well. Um, and we do work with um, a ton of investors. Brickhouse Realty really loves our investors and our property management program is amazing. Um, lots of great reviews. And I think we can be a great fit for you. So we talked about that. Um, let's see. What else is there to talk about, Andrea? Hmm. <laughs> We just want to, we want to help you kind of, if you are a renter, we want to help you convert and become a homeowner. So say you just signed your lease, you're not ready for a year or two down the road. It's never too early to start thinking about home ownership. Some of those steps may just include looking at your credit. When's the last time you looked at your credit? If you want us to help you with that, you can give our office a call. We'll provide that contact information with you guys shortly, but it may really just start with looking at credit, seeing how much savings that you have, and maybe start putting, creating a budget for yourself and start putting some money away from savings so that a year from now, two years from now, whenever you're ready, you're in a position to do so. Um, there's nothing wrong with being a renter. We are not trying to put the peer pressure on you here today. But if you are a renter and you're thinking about becoming a homeowner, start today and prepare for what home ownership is like. So live like a homeowner, making sure that you stay up on any of those maintenance. One of the things that I see oftentimes, just easy things like changing that furnace filter. You want to start forming those habits now so that when you do become a homeowner, you're already ready, prepared, and you know what you have to do. That's a good tip. My furnace guy would appreciate that you said that. <laughs> and so you have to get, a, I didn't know you had to change a filter so frequently. <laughs> so recently when I had to get my, um, my furnace replaced over in the rental property, they pulled it out and they were like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, you know, there's lots of ways you can become acquainted on like on how to get started as far as like what is required to maintain a property. Um, and so something as simple as putting the filter, you know, getting the right size filter and actually even putting it in the right way so the airflow can go is important. And that's things that, you know, some things that people don't think about. Um, so that's what we're here for. We're here to guide you, help you, motivate you and encourage you along the way. Harvey Rice parents, you know that I'm in it for the long haul with you guys. If we're not doing real estate, we're doing yoga. <laughs> so I appreciate you for having us today and for you guys tuning in. So what can we do to help you get started? What can we do to kind of, you know, put some fire under you? Andrea mentioned that we, um, she, we are HUD agency and we can help, you know, you walk through the process of looking at your credit and things like that. So who wants to be, who wants in, who wants to get started? <laughs> Raise your hands. So if you want to get started, even if it's just a, a, an exploratory conversation, just to kind of let us hear what's going on, what you're thinking about doing. We want to hear from you. So what I want you to do, we're going to make this really, really simple. 
I want you guys to text your name, your email address, and hashtag Harvey Rice. Again, name, email address, hashtag Harvey Rice to 216-990-9080. Again, name, email, hashtag Harvey Rice to 216-990-9080. And we are going to select, hmm, let's say we'll give it three people for this first month. We'll select three people um, where there is, because there is a small cost for the credit report, correct, Andrea? Yes. Okay, so the three people that we randomly select, I'm gonna cover the close, I'm gonna cover the cost to obtain your credit report. And then we will set you, well, we'll have you go through the process and we'll set everything up and some time to talk so that we can get you started. So what are you waiting for? Pick up those cell phones. All right, Harvey Rice. Again, Shauna Stevens with Brickhouse Realty along with Andrea Wilson, our broker. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to working with you in the future and look forward to, we look forward to new um, some new workshops coming up. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Thanks.